Hi, I'm Mike from the Technical Support Department. In this video, you'll learn how to set up and install decoders on an ACC controller. The ACC controller is available as a conventional 24 VAC model or as a two-wire decoder controller. A decoder system permits the use of 99 stations without having to run 99 wires to the field. With a decoder system, you only need a two-wire path from which you can connect multiple decoders. This type of system is also known as a two-wire system. You can have up to six two-wire paths attached to the controller, allowing you to route them in all different directions. You can have up to 99 decoder stations, two master valves, and five sensor decoders, all attached to either a single two-wire path or divided over multiple paths to the field. Throughout the video, we will go over the different decoder types and we will show you how to program a station decoder, how to set up and program a decoder as a pump or master valve output, as well as how to perform a test to ensure that the decoder system is working properly. Finally, we will show you how to view the decoder configuration and display ADM alarms. There are four types of station decoders. Single station decoders, or ICD-100, two station decoders, or ICD-200, four station decoders, or ICD-400, and six station decoders, or ICD-600. There is also a sensor decoder known as the ICD-SYN. So before installing the decoders, it is crucial that you program them here at the controller first. Hunter decoders are somewhat unique in that all you do is program in the station number. You'll want to stay organized and know what decoder is going to go where on the property. You'll also want to keep a checklist showing you which decoders you've programmed already, which addresses, and which ones you still have left to do so you avoid double programming. To program a decoder, open the wiring compartment door. It is important that you properly label each decoder with its assigned stations and that you keep a checklist where you can check off the stations as you program them to avoid duplicate or skipping stations. Take the red and blue wires from the decoder and insert them into the two programming ports on the decoder output module. The order does not matter. Turn the dial to advanced features position and press the down arrow to access decoder functions. Use the plus to select it. Then it will be flashing program a decoder. Use the plus again to select program a decoder. It shows checking for decoder and it comes back with the decoder type and the station number it's currently programmed to be. In the decoder type field, the controller indicates the size of the decoder attached. Ours is a two station decoder. While the cursor is flashing over the decoder type, use the down arrow to have the first station output flashing. In this field, you will be able to enter the first station number assigned to this decoder. In this situation, we'll assign station number one. We'll leave the power factor and inrush values intact, as it is not normally necessary to change these factors except under very unusual circumstances. To program the decoder, with the station numbers you assigned, press the Programs button, and the controller will send this information to the decoder. If successful, the display will show programming complete. Once the first decoder is programmed, remove the wires from the programming port and attach another decoder to continue the programming process. Remember, the order here does not matter. Press the plus button to have the controller check for the new decoder and set the station number, keeping in mind the last station that was assigned to the previous decoder. Follow the same process for each decoder. Don't worry if you make a mistake. You can easily reprogram a decoder a second time if you need to change the station numbers by following the same procedure. So avoiding duplicate addresses in the ACC decoders is super important. We're dealing with two-way communications. So if you have two matching addresses out in the field when the controller turns that station on, both decoders will respond and the controller won't hear either of them. You'll end up with a communication fault. This is a relatively common mistake in new installations. After you've programmed all your station decoders, you're now ready to take them out to the field and connect them to your two-wire path and to your valves. 
All decoders come with two DBR-Y6 connectors. These are used for all the connections between the decoder and the two-wire path. An ACC controller set up as a decoder system has a decoder output module from which a pair of wires, a red and a blue, are run to the field. This pair of wires is known as the two-wire path. The whole system is color-coded, red and blue. Always connect the red wire to the red terminals and the blue wires to the blue terminals. Then connect the reds to reds and blues to blues at the decoders in the field. Never connect a red wire to a blue wire or you'll need to find and correct it before the system will operate properly. As far as inside the wiring compartment goes, we have our decoder output module attaching to our three color-coded two-wire paths that go out to the field. Next to that, we have the two sensor wires coming up. One of those sensor wires is for flow, and the other one is for a rain-click type sensor. To the left of that, we have the grounding lug. Now, that grounding lug is for an outbound ground wire that goes out to the field to a grounding rod or a grounding plate. And to the left of that, we have the incoming power supply. In our case, it's 120. We have chosen 120 here in the selector switch. We would choose 230 in case we had 230 coming in. To the right of that is the on-off toggle switch, which turns the power supply off to everything after the junction box going into the controller. Remember to have all of your high voltage connections made by a licensed electrician. So here we are at the valve box, and we have our two-wire path ran through and looped in the box, and it continues on down the main line. We've made sure that the two-wire path also is turned off. It has no electricity. We're going to end up pulling a pretty decent-sized loop up out of the box. You want to get about three to four feet of wire for each side up out of the box, and we'll cut our wire at the top of this loop. Now, once we've done that, we'll want to strip off the outer jacket all the way down to just a few inches inside the valve box. That'll leave our blue and red interior wire exposed and much easier to work with inside the box. You'll also want to have all this extra wire for any strain relief purposes in case the ground settles around the area over time. So here we're inside the valve box for the master valve, and we have our two-wire path coming in from both sides of the valve box. We've stripped off the outer jacket all the way down to about two or three inches prior to leaving the valve box. That makes the wire much easier to work with here inside the box. We've looped it around and we'll be using these two reds and two blues to connect onto the red and the blue for the decoder itself. Red to red and blue to blue. On top of that, we have one single station output, the two black wires, and these two black wires will end up being connected to the two wires coming from the master valve. So we've pulled the two wire path out of the valve box and we'll be making our three-way splice of our decoder wire to the main run of the two wire path. Of course, we'll be using red to red and blue to blue in all cases. So we'll start here with the three blues. Get those into the wire nut. Snug it up. Nice and snug. And we'll be using our 3M DBRY6 connectors. And we'll shove that wire nut down deep all the way into the bottom of the capsule. And once we've done that, we'll take our three wires, one out the front, one out the side, and one out the other side, and we'll make sure that we snap the cap shut. It'll snap right in place, and that's a good connection. So this illustrates the completed installation of the master valve and the master valve decoder. As before, you've seen that we've pulled in the two wire path from the left and the right side. We've exposed the outer jacket to expose the red and blue wires from the inside. We've used the 3M DBR-Y6 connectors to go from the red and blue wires on the decoder over to the red and blue wires of the two-wire path. That's our main decoder to wire path connection. The decoder also has two black wires, which we've connected over to the two red wires of the solenoid. There, once again, we've used the 3M DBR-Y6 connectors as well. We have our grounding out of the decoder down to our grounding rod or our grounding plate. 
and we've also mounted the decoder here on the stake for ease of use with the ICD handheld programmer. This example is a multi-station decoder, or ICD-200. We have the two-wire path coming into the box, and in this case it's an end wire run, so the two-wire path terminates into this box. We have the two black leads coming out of the decoder going to valve number one, and the two yellow leads coming out of the decoder going to valve number two. We've used our 3M DBRY6 connectors in all locations, and keep in mind you can actually have a valve located up to 150 feet away from the decoder. In this instance, they're right on top of each other, but you can go up to 150 feet away with an extra valve, and you always want to keep your wire runs as short as possible. You'll notice a bare copper wire. This is used for grounding at least every 12th decoder in each two-wire path, or every 1,000 feet, or 330 meters, and at the end of every wire run, whichever comes first. Those are minimum grounding specs, and you should ground more often in high lightning areas. So a one-station decoder can also be programmed as a pump or a master valve decoder. Remember you have two options here. You can have your pump start relay or your master valve connected through a decoder and attached somewhere out in your two-wire path if that's more convenient. In some instances, your pump station or your pump start relay or your master valve might be very close to the controller and it doesn't need to be in the two-wire path. In that case, you can run the wires from that master valve or relay right back to the controller separately off the two-wire path without a decoder. There's two pump start relay terminals, PMV1 and PMV2, that you can assign individually. So if you decide to connect the pump start relay or the master valve through a decoder out in the field, you'll need to tell the controller that the master valve or relay is located on the wire path by selecting ADM in the location for the output. Starting with the dial in the run position, hold down the blue information button, turn the dial to set pump operation, and once there, release the blue information button. Since the pump or master valve will be connected through a decoder, you need to change the location from controller to ADM for the output being used so that the controller sends the signal through the decoder output module, or ADM, and not through the controller's pump or master valve output terminals. The style should remain NC or normally closed, which is the normal setting for most master valves. So if you're going to assign a master valve or a pump start relay to a decoder, you must use an ICD-100. You won't be able to combine station outputs and master valve outputs on the same mixed decoder, so it must be an ICD-100. Follow the same programming process you did when you were programming station decoders, but change the decoder type to pump and choose between pump or master valve output 1 or pump or master valve output 2. In this case, we'll choose pump 1. Again, the power factor and enrich values will remain intact. Press the Programs button to send this information to the decoder. So when your station decoders are complete, and any of your pump and master valve decoders have also been installed, it's time to test the system. You'll want to do this initial test before installing any of the sensor decoders. The ACC99D has a test function that will run decoder stations one at a time. In decoder controllers, the test program will only try to activate stations that already have a runtime assigned in one of the automatic programs. If a schedule has not been programmed yet, program a short run time on each of the stations assigned to decoders for test purposes only. If a station does not have a runtime assigned, it will be skipped in the test program. Turn the dial back to the run position. With the dial in the run position, press and hold the programs button until the test program appears. ACC decoder controllers will have a minimum of 15 second run times in the test mode. That can be increased before the test with the plus button, if so chosen. The reason for the 15 second minimum is to allow enough time for each decoder to respond and for a couple of retries if the first attempt failed. When the desired runtime is entered, simply let go of the buttons and the test will begin within a few seconds. Successful stations will be seen running in the display one at a time.
failed stations which do not respond will also be shown in the display as alarms. You can turn the dial to the data history position. Use the down triangle to select alarm log. Use plus to select to view the alarm log for more specific information on any failures. The most common causes for initial decoder failures are poor wiring connections, duplicate addresses in different decoders, and unprogrammed decoders that have been overlooked. Besides allowing you to set up and program decoders on the two-wire path, the ACC99D also allows you to view the decoder configuration of a programmed decoder out on the wire path. This also confirms you have communication from the controller to that decoder. To access this function, turn the dial to Advanced Features. Select Decoder Functions, and choose View Decoder Configuration. In this screen, you will be able to enter the decoder type, such as Station Decoder, Pump or Master Valve, or Sensor Decoder, along with the address of the station you want to look for. When you press the Copy Learn button, the controller will search for the decoder you indicated, and if the decoder is found in the two-wire path, the controller will display its configuration. If the controller does not see the decoder that you are searching for, the message will show the decoder was not found on the two-wire path. That could mean that there are two decoders with the same address out in the field, or the decoder is not physically out there, or the decoder you are looking for has no power from the two-wire path in its location. So Hunter also offers the ICD-HP handheld programmer for use in programming and diagnostics of decoders out in the field once installed. We've mounted our decoder on top of the stake with the lower end above the stake, and that way we can easily pop our programming cup right on top of the decoder. The base of the decoder is the best spot for the transfer of information from the programming cup to the decoder. And once again, this allows you to program and reprogram stations, as well as troubleshoot your two-wire path. Another piece of information you can see in the decoder functions menu is display ADM current. This shows the current draw in milliamps of all decoders connected to the decoder output module, or ADM. With no decoders connected, the reading will be fairly low, around 15 milliamps. Each decoder connected to a two-wire path will add to the current draw about three or four milliamps, even if they are not running. As stations turn on, the current level will go up approximately 40 milliamps per station. This function is only used for diagnostic purposes. This concludes the decoder functions of the ACC. Make sure to watch our other videos on how to operate the ACC controller. They're available at hunterindustries.com. And thanks for watching.